Dream to become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein? Learn calculus from Refath Bari, aka 800 over 800 guy, is teaching calculus this year. Watch his videos. Hi right, folks, what's up? This is Refath Albert Bari from Bari Science Lab. Today I'm going to be trying to prove the quotient rule. Uh, if you don't know what the quotient rule is, uh, let me introduce it to you. The quotient rule is one of the derivative rules we use to evaluate limits, derivatives, uh, finding the slopes of tangent lines, all of that good stuff. So uh, the quotient rule is going to help us evaluate a lot of stuff. And that's why it's so helpful. Um, let me introduce it to you. Uh, let's say we have a function f of x. Right? And let's say f of x is defined as the quotient of two functions g of x and h of x. The quotient rule tells us that the derivative of f of x, denoted as f prime of x, can be written as the derivative of the top function times the bottom function, minus the derivative of the bottom function times the top function, all divided by the bottom function squared, right? And that, right there, is the quotient rule. Uh, quotient rule. But uh, today, I'm not going to just rotely introduce the quotient rule to you. I'm going to try to derive it. Remember the limit definition of derivative we learned uh, way back when, like episode 7? Today we're going to be trying to prove the quotient rule using the limit definition of a derivative. Uh, it's quite exhaustive, but uh, let's see if we can get it. <coughs> um, just for reference, I'm going to keep the quotient rule in this uh, corner so we can check at the end if uh, we really got it. So f prime of x is uh, g prime of x h of x plus g of x times h prime of x all over h of x squared. Okay, and that's the quotient rule. And uh, so let's get uh, go ahead and get started. Let's try to prove uh, this quotient rule. So, uh, how do we uh, get started? Well, remember, the quotient rule is just a rule for evaluating derivatives. And derivatives are just limits, right? They're another way to express limits. So, <clears throat> let's say we have a function, right? Um, let's call that function f of x, just as we did in the beginning. And f of x is going to be defined as g of x over h of x, right? Let's use the limit definition of the derivative to evaluate this, right? So, remember, we're trying to find what f prime of x is equal to. So, uh, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x. Right? Isn't that what, uh, what it's all about? Um, but remember the limit definition of a derivative tells us that's equal to f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Right? That's the limit definition of a derivative. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and plug that in. What is f of x plus h? Well, it's simply g of x plus h over h. Oh, let me call this um, so we don't get mixed up. Let's call that m of x, right? <coughs> so, the uh, limit as h approaches 0 is simply going to become the limit as... Uh, it's hard to write from over there. So, the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h over m of x plus h um, minus f of x and f of x is simply g of x over m of x and remember to divide all of that by h okay now if you can now uh, look clearly we have two fractions on our numerator Whenever we have fractions, we try to make common denominators out of that uh, good algebra. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, how do we make common denominators here? Well, uh, let me give you a brief mini lesson. Uh -huh. So we have g of x plus h over 
sine of x plus h minus g of x over m of x. <coughs> we seek to make common denominators. And the common denominator of this is going to have, uh, is going to be m of x times m of x plus h. Right? If we multiply this by m of x, we're simply going to get m of x times g of x plus h. Right? Oh, this x is not looking good. Alright, and we subtract that uh, with, remember this is also going to be m of x plus h times m of x. Uh, this is simply going to become what? m of x plus h times g of x. <coughs> Alright, great. Now let's combine this into one fraction so that we get what? m of x times g of x plus h minus m of x plus h times g of x and divide all of that by m of x times m of x plus h. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. And remember um, all of this is divided by h, right? Well, what we have here is, uh, if you notice, this is a, called a complex fraction. And uh, with complex fractions, we try to, you know, get rid of denominators and all of that good stuff. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to multiply this complex fraction by 1, aka m of x times m of x plus h, divided by m of x times m of x plus h. Right? And the reason I do that is so that this denominator and this numerator here can uh, cancel out. So that now my original expression simplifies to m of x plus h, sorry, m of x times g of x plus h minus m of x plus h times g of x all over h times m of x times m of x plus <coughs> h. <coughs> all right. Now we've simplified our original limit into just one fraction. Not a complex fraction, not a quadratic fraction, but just a fraction. So we can just rewrite our limit as f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of this monster, m of x times g of x plus h minus uh, m of x plus h times g of x all divided by h times m of x times m of x plus h. Okay, so go ahead and erase this part. We don't need it anymore. We already simplified our uh, fractions denominator. <coughs> so now we have this. Uh, where do we go on from here? Well, now is where you really try to use your intuition and creativity. Now what we're going to do is essentially try to add zero to the numerator of this fraction so that we can try to factor out some derivatives or limits or whatnot. So what I'm going to do is simply, uh, well, let's take a look. I have f of x, uh, uh, sorry, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of m of x times g of x plus h. And now I'm going to add uh, m of x times g of x. And the reason I add m of x plus g of x minus m of x plus h g of x minus m of x g of x is so that I can finally, if you look carefully, all I did was add 0, right? So I'm not doing anything illegal. But the reason why I added this m of x g of x term is so that I can eventually factor out g of x and m of x and get the derivative of f of the functions f and g. You'll see what I mean later on. But um, yeah, essentially I've added 0. And you'll understand the significance of that as we uh, move forward. So we have on the denominator h times m of x times m of x plus h. And now, if you look carefully, we can actually factor out m of x and g of x in the numerator. So that I get f prime of x <coughs> is simply equal to 
the limit as h approaches 0 of, let's factor out that m of x. Actually, uh, would I like to factor out m of x? Uh, let's factor out, uh, hmm. let's factor out g of x here, negative g of x. So, well, let's go ahead, uh, m of x, we factor that out, what do we get? We get g of x plus h minus g of x. All right, that's all good. And now we factor out negative g of x. And uh, if we factor that out, we're going to get what? Um, we get m of x plus h minus m of x. And now hopefully you realize by now why I added those two terms uh, a few uh, few seconds ago. And the reason why I did that, you should realize, is so that I get the derivative of my two functions, m and g. Okay, now I have, I'm approaching the derivative of these, uh, of these two functions, m and g, but how can I really flesh them out? Well, I'm going to try to break this big limit apart into two separate limits, using the property that the limit of a difference is the difference of two limits. So how can we use that to our advantage? Well, this simply becomes um, f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of m of x times g of x plus h minus g of x uh, over h times m of x times m of x plus h and subtract all of that by the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x times m of x plus h minus m of x all over, remember our, our denominator is going to stay the same, all over what? Uh, h times m of x, h times m of x times m of x plus h. So, uh, okay, we've written uh, the difference uh, the limit of a difference as the difference of two limits. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is um, is try to rewrite these as the derivatives of our two functions m and g. So how can we do that? Well, um, let's come over here. We've run out of space finally. Uh, let's come over here and uh, try to rewrite it. So we have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of uh, g of x plus h minus g of x all over h times uh, m of x over m of x plus h over okay so I finished uh, that limit and I'm going to subtract from it the limit as h approaches 0 of m of x plus h minus m of x all over h times uh, g of x over the same denominator m of x times m of x plus h. So this becomes f prime of x is equal to, well this is simply g prime of x, right? So I can write g prime of x uh, times uh, the limit as h approaches 0 of m of x over m of x times m of x plus h, right? I can write that, minus uh, m prime of x times the limit as h approaches 0 of what? of g of x over m of x times m of x plus h. Now notice that h is simply approaching 0. So um, I can simply take out this h over here, right? m of x plus h now approaches m of x. So I can take this out. Now you notice that my m of x is cancelled. So now f prime of x actually becomes g prime of x times uh, the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over m of x 
minus um, m prime of x uh, times the limit as h approaches 0 of um, g of x over m of x squared. So now I can simply simplify this, right? Uh, now I get f prime, f prime of x is equal to, um, this simply becomes 1 over m of x. So I get g prime of x over m of x minus, uh, minus m prime of x g of x over m of x squared. And now you can see we're very close to our final uh, quotient rule. So I have f prime of x is equal to, uh, once again, let's go ahead and set common denominators. So I get g prime of x times m of x over m, uh, so, sorry, m of x squared minus m prime of x times g of x over m of x squared. And now I finally have common denominators so that I can have f prime of x is equal to g prime of x uh, times m of x minus m prime of x times g of x over m of x squared. Okay, folks, now if you compare this with our original equation up here, you'll see that they're exactly equivalent, except instead of h, I used m so that um, you don't get confused with the notation or that terminology, but otherwise they're exactly identical. And now we have just proved the quotient rule. So uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. To fall in love with math and science, especially programming, 